Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. We worship you this morning. We glorify your holy name, Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Jesus, you are worthy. We sing you are worthy. We believe you are worthy. We declare your worthiness, Jesus. Because you were crucified on our position. Because you died on our position. Because you were buried on our position. Because you went to hell on our position. Because you rose on the third day on our position. Because you ascended in heaven on our position. Because you are seated at the right hand of the Father on our position. That's why we sing, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy in our midst this morning. You are worthy in our lives. You are worthy in our homes. You are worthy in our working place. You are worthy in our hearts. Jesus, you are worthy. We sing your worthiness. We see your worthiness. We worship your worthiness. You are worthy, Jesus, the Son of the living God. This morning, we praise your holy name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this wonderful Jesus, for your Son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise and worship team. God bless you. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, thank you for your coming. This is a wonderful day. The Lord has given to you and to me. God loves you so much. And this is very important to remind of the love of God to our lives. You are the beloved. He loves you so much. And the highest expression of his love to you is when he gave Jesus. When he gave his only begotten son. There is no great love than this. This is the highest expression of God's love to your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say with me, God loves me? God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Hallelujah. Let's clap to the Lord, please. Uh, last week I was not uh, around, but uh, Mama Temalira uh, was here. And I thank God for her and the ministry in, he, in her. Uh, I remember to have been sharing with you in the past few weeks about Holy Spirit. I remember to have told you about uh, the encounter of Holy Spirit in your life and that encounter begin before you are born again. And they said Holy Spirit is the one who was involved in convincing you that you are a sinner. He is the one who was involved in convincing your heart, wooing around you, telling you you are a sinner and that you need Jesus. It was Holy Spirit who pushed you from where you are to come to the church. Or maybe it was an evangelism going somewhere. It was Holy Spirit pushing you. He is the one who helped you to make a decision to receive Jesus in your life. So, 
encounter of the Holy Spirit is before you were born again. In the very day when you decided to accept Jesus, it is Holy Spirit who gave birth to you, just like Jesus. It was Holy Spirit involved in the conception of Jesus in the womb of Virgin Mary. It was the work of Holy Mary, and the angel told Mary that the power of the highest will be upon you. So the very day when you, you received Jesus, it was Holy Spirit who was involved to give birth to you as a new creation, as a born again Christian. So that was the first encounter. Then I said the second encounter is when now you are baptized with him. Baptism of Holy Spirit is the second encounter. And this one is symbolized by speaking in tongue. And then I shared with you a bit extensive about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being baptized is not enough. When you are born again, it's not enough. Every child of God, everyone who is born again, must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, that is not enough as well. You must be filled with him every day in your life. I remember to have shared with you how can you fill with Holy Spirit every day? I gave you about five steps. Making sure you are filled with him every day. And then I started sharing with you on the benefit of speaking in tongues. I didn't finish on that. I started sharing with you. When you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues is a privilege, is an opportunity, is a language given to you by the Father in heaven. A communicating language. Very, very important. And they said, when you speak in tongues, you speak mysteries. You speak the wisdom of God. No one understands what you are speaking. Even angels, demons, they don't understand what you are speaking. You are speaking directly to the Father in heaven. I didn't finish in that. And then a week before last week, I paused and said, I think we need to know who is the Holy Spirit. We've been speaking about him, his involvement in salvation. We've been speaking about being baptized with the Holy Spirit. We've been speaking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. We're speaking about speaking in tongues. But who is the Holy Spirit? This was my last sharing with you. Who is this Holy Spirit? And many Christians, they don't understand who is he. Who is this Holy Spirit? I shared with you a week before last week. It is important to understand him. Who is this Holy Spirit? I give you a scripture. What the Bible says he is. He is the Spirit of the Father. The Spirit of God. I gave you scripture that the Bible says Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord is the Spirit. I give you another scripture telling Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. I gave you another scripture which says Holy Spirit is the Lord of harvest. Lord of harvest. When you talk of harvest, we talk of souls, winning souls. He is the Lord of harvest. I gave you another scripture saying, Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And he said, Holy Spirit is God. 
the God of the hour. The Father is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. Holy Spirit is the God of the hour. He is here with you and me. Who is Holy Spirit? And I concluded by saying, Holy Spirit is a person. Most of Christians, they know Holy Spirit in speaking in tongues. But he is more than speaking in tongues. Many Christians, they know Holy Spirit as power, yes. But he is more than power. Many Christians, they know Holy Spirit in his gift of healing. But Holy Spirit is more than healing. Holy Spirit is more than miracle. Holy Spirit is more than word of knowledge. And I said, he is a person. Holy Spirit. A person has things he's interested in. There are things he loves. I've, I've got things I love and I've got things I don't like. Holy Spirit, I said, is a person. And I said, brothers and sisters, we should go beyond speaking in tongues. We should go beyond it power. We should go beyond healing. We should go beyond miracle and meet him as a person. He is a person. He is waiting for you to interact with him as a person. Here's where I ended a week before last week. Holy Spirit as a person. Holy Spirit as a person. He needs your attention. You have to recognize him as a person. Someone given to you by the Father. Someone given to you as your friend. Someone you can walk with. Someone you should interact with. Some people, nobody can walk with you everywhere. But the Holy Spirit is with you everywhere. When you are sleeping, he's there. When you are at the work, he's there. When you are in a danger, he's there. Holy Spirit is with you everywhere you go. You have to recognize his personality. He is a person. He is more than a power. Holy Spirit is not a wind. Holy Spirit is not a dove. It's not a bird. He is a person. He is waiting for you to talk to him. To walk with him. This is where I ended a week before last week. Who is Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is God. He is the Person. He is God. He is the one who was introduced in the first verse of the Bible. Genesis 1 verse 1. When the world was full of darkness. Water covered the world. There was void. Loneliness. Silence. Great silence. Deep silence. But the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of water. There was darkness, but he was there. There was loneliness, but he was there. Just as he is in your life, and you can be facing some sickness, but he is there with you, with all your problems, but he is there. He was there in the beginning. There was darkness, but he was there. There was loneliness, but he was there. In your life, when you are born again, Holy Spirit is there, is waiting for you to recognize him, to turn to him, to talk to him, to worship him, to speak to him, to give him attention. Who is Holy Spirit? So I said, he's a person. And as a person, he needs your attention. As a person, he has things he likes and things he don't like. He can love, he can be grieved. Jesus said, don't grieve the spirit. He can be grieved. He is so tender, he is so lovely. He can never force himself into your life. Unless we invite him, he will never force himself into your life. He is a helper. He came to help you. So today I just want to show you a bit more about him. 
And uh, I just want to introduce something which I'll start next week. Let's read from the Bible. Matthew chapter 11 verse 27. Holy Spirit is so, so wonderful. So many times in my life, I reach a stage, I see there is no way, no way out. But when I remember Holy Spirit is in me, I turn to him and ask him, how do I go about here? How do I get out? And the Surprising. Most of the time, he can give me a very simple advice. And I get out, and everyone is surprised. How did you manage to get out of this place? He's wonderful, wonderful. All he needs is your recognition. Give him attention. Recognize him. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 27. The gospel according to Matthew, chapter 11, verse 27. This is Jesus' words. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whom, to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. This verse shows that no one knows the Father except Jesus. No one knows Jesus except the Father. So, you will never be able to know God unless you know Jesus. These are some of the basic things in Christianity. It's very, very important. So, don't waste your time trying to know God. You will never. So God has shown us a way. If you want to know God, then know Jesus. Are we together? You want to know the Father, know Jesus, because no one. In some other places, Jesus said, no one has seen the Father. No one has seen the Father. And no man can see him. Even when you go to heaven right now, you will never be able to see the Father. If you go to heaven, you only see Jesus with one head and two eyes. Two hands like you and me. Why? Let's read from Hebrew 1. These are some of the basic things you need to know as a Christian. Hebrew chapter 1. You will never be able to know fa the Father except you know Jesus. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, verse 2 hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son who he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds the worlds is plural that's very interesting the worlds is plural I'm not interested in that Ivan verse 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person I'll just end there. So, Jesus is the brightness of the glory of God. Jesus is the influence of the glory of God. He is the radiance of the glory of God. He is the light 
of the glory of God. And he says he is the express, express image of his person. The icon. The footprint of his person. God, one day I said God is living in a light according to Paul. God is living in an approachable light that no man has seen and no man will be able to see him. This is what the Bible says. He is living in an approachable light. And then when you read your Bible carefully, we say God is in heaven. Yes, it's true. But God is not in the heaven where Jesus is. Because heaven was created. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1 that God created heaven and earth. Paul said he went into the third heaven. There is first heaven. There is second heaven. There is third heaven. I don't know how many heavens are there. But heavens were created. The earth was created. All the planets was created. Where was God when he was creating these things? Where was he? That's where he is now. Where was he? That is where he is right now. So God, when he wanted to express himself, he came out of where he is and gave himself a body. This body is called Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the God we can see. Is the God who walked in the street of Galilee and Jerusalem. The God who touched people and healed them. Is this Jesus Christ? Is the one we can relate. He looks exactly like you and me. This is when you will find him in heaven. He is the one one day will come from the sky with a numerous number of angels. He is the one who is coming back, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. This is the God we know, the God we have seen. And Jesus says, you can never be able to know the Father unless you know him. Because he is the influence, the brightness of his glory. He is the image of God. You see Jesus, you see God. When you have seen him, you have seen the Father. Philip one day asked him, you are saying you are going to the Father. You are going to the Father. Show us the Father. Show us the Father. Always you tell us you want to go back to the Father. You go back to the Father. Philip was tired. He said, Jesus, show us the Father. And then Jesus said, you have stayed with me all this day. He who has seen me has seen the Father. When you want to know the Father, you know Jesus. This is my point I'm trying to make across you. You want to know God, you have to know Jesus. You want to know the Father, you have to know Jesus. And then Jesus left. Before leaving, he said, I had so many things to tell you, but I could not tell you because you could not bear them now. Let's read from John 16. The Gospel of John. Chapter 16. Verse 12 to 15. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 16, verse 12 to 15. These are the words of Jesus again. He was making a disclaimer on his statement. Verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. How bad when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you unto all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whoso whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify me 
for he shall receive of mine and shall shew it to you. Verse 15. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show, show it to you. What, what I was trying to say is you can never know God unless you know Jesus. Now here, Jesus is saying he stayed for three and a half years preaching the gospel. And you say, he, he did not finish what he wanted to say. But he said, I'll bring you another helper. I'll bring you a helper. The Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit is the one who is here now. And you say, with this Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will not speak of himself. Holy Spirit does not speak of himself. He speaks of Jesus. That is when you are not born again, when you are listening to the gospel, Holy Spirit was not pointing you to him. He was pointing you to Jesus. He was telling you, you need to believe Jesus. The blood of Jesus was shed for your forgiveness of sins. Now, you will never be able to know Jesus until you know Holy Spirit. He is the one who is here to reveal the presence of Jesus in your heart. He is the one who is here to reveal the presence of the Father in your heart. You will never know God until you know Jesus. You will never know Jesus until you know Holy Spirit. He is there for Jesus. He is another helper. He came to show you Jesus. He came to reveal you Jesus. Because by the time Jesus was speaking these words, that I have so many things to tell you, he, he was not crucified. He was not dead. He was not buried. He was not risen from the dead. And these are the critical moment in Christianity. That's why Jesus said, I have so many things to tell you, but I cannot tell you now because the highest, the depth of my coming, the root of my coming, the most important part of my coming, I have not finished it. And by the time I finish it, I won't have time to tell you. So I'll bring you another helper. I'll bring you the Holy Spirit who will show you what happened on the cross. What happened on the cross. You just saw people they were beating him, but behind the skin, behind the sin, behind the curtain. Jesus that was taking the sins of the world, all sins in the past, all the present sin, all the future sin. This is what Holy Spirit came to reveal to Paul what Jesus has done on the cross. This is what Jesus said, I could not tell you because you cannot take it. I have not done that job. But once the job is done and the Holy Spirit comes he will show you what happened on the cross. He will show you why I died. He will show you my blood. He will show you why I was buried. He will show you why I went to hell. I didn't go to hell because of anything. I went to hell so that you cannot go to hell. I took your sickness so that you can never be sick. I took your poverty so that you can never be poor. This is what the Holy Spirit is revealing in you. What Jesus has done on the cross. He is here to point to Jesus. He is here to show him Jesus. Jesus, to show you Jesus, to reveal him in your heart. But you have to understand, Holy Spirit is a person. Is a person. Most people, they look for healing. They don't look for him. Most people, they look for tongues. They don't look for the one giving utterance. The utterance, the ability to speak in tongues is given to you by Holy Spirit. He has given you that ability. He is imparting that ability in your heart. You can speak in tongues at will, anytime you want. He is the one who gave you that ability. But you don't have to focus on that ability. Focus on him. Focus on the person of Holy Spirit. Focus on him as a person. Some people, they like power. They like anointing. They like when they pray. People fall down. They like to see miracle. But he's more than miracle. The person behind miracle is Holy Spirit. He wants you to focus to him. Don't focus on the miracle. Don't focus on the healing. He is the one who was given to you by the Father. Who is this Holy Spirit? 
who is Holy Spirit. You never know Jesus without knowing the Holy Spirit. You will never know Jesus without knowing the Holy Spirit. He is there for you. You can stay with him for so many years without knowing him. He's a wonderful companion. So what I'm saying is for you to know Jesus you need to know the Holy Spirit. You have to know Holy Spirit is very, very important. You have to know him. You have to know him. You have to know him. He is there to reveal Jesus to you. You are born again, yes. You have been baptized with him, yes. You are speaking in tongues, it's okay. You are filled with the spirit, yes. But he's a person. He wants you to focus to him. The most challenge to many Christians is how to relate to Holy Spirit. This is the challenging task. How to relate to him. How to relate to Holy Spirit. How to relate to him. How to walk with him. Your victory depending on how you walk with Holy Spirit. Your health depends on how you walk with him. Your marriage depends on how you walk with Holy Spirit. Your success depends on how you walk with him. He is given to you. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, let's read there, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He is wonderful. When I think of his gentleness, I always cry. He's so gentle. Always he never forces his ways. He's waiting for you to invite him. He's waiting for you to talk to him. He's waiting for you to talk to him, to recognize his presence in your life as a person. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 this is Paul speaking now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God there are things that has been given and this is very important there are things that are done in the presence of God in heaven. They are history. They are done. God is not going to do them again. It's done. You have to know these things which are freely given to you. How do you know them? Through Holy Spirit. Through Holy Spirit. How do you know them? Through the Spirit of God. He is given to you so that you can know those things which are already given. Many people they think when they pray is when God now decides, should I give you, should I not give you? And then God said, no, no, just pray some more, pray some more. It's not like that. There are things which are already given. They are settled in heaven. One of these things is eternal life. John, John, 1 John chapter 5 says, there is a record in heaven. In heaven there is a record. There is a record. There is a record. Is in heaven computer. In the books of heaven there is a record. It has been recorded in the heaven history. In the heaven archives that God has given you eternal life. This record is in heaven that God has given you eternal life. He is not going to give you eternal life. He has given you eternal life. This record is in heaven. Now, who will help you to live this eternal life? This eternal life is a life which is indestructible. You can never destroy this life. This eternal life is in you. 
This is one of the things that are freely given to you by God. But you can never understand these things until the help of Holy Spirit. It is only Holy Spirit who can help you know this eternal life which is in you. When Jesus said, I came so that you can have life and have life more abundantly. Life in your spirit, life in your soul, life in your body, life in your finances, life in your marriage, life in your business, life in your chicken, life in your cow. He gave you eternal life. This eternal life is in you. It has been recorded in heaven. It is done. It is the Holy Spirit who can help you. Can reveal these things into you. And help you how to live this eternal life. No man can help you on this. No man can help you on this. It's only Holy Spirit. Now, I'll just end by showing you how to relate with Holy Spirit. This is the critical part. Next week I'll pray that I take you a bit deeper on how to relate with Holy Spirit. But today let's read from first, Second Corinthians chapter 13, the last verse of chapter 13. And this is the core of our Christian life. First, Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. This is a very important aspect of our Christian life. Very, very important. Okay, let me leave that one. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. This is Paul concluding his letter to the Corinthians. Speaking about three things. The grace of Jesus Christ. The grace of Jesus Christ. The grace of Jesus. You can speak the whole year about this grace. This is wonderful grace. Which made a sinner like me to become the son of God. It was because of this grace I'm standing here. It is not because I know too much. It's because of this grace. This is grace is so powerful. Paul says, I am what I am because of the grace. The grace. The grace of Jesus. Grace means undeserved. Grace means unmerited. Grace means unearned. Grace means undeserved, number one. Number two, unmerited. Number three, unearned. Grace, undeserved, what does it mean? Undeserved, which means whatever I have received from Jesus, whether there's forgiveness of sin, whether there's salvation, whether there's Holy Spirit, I did not deserve. I did not deserve. That's called grace. I just believed on Jesus. Lord, I believe on you. And I receive. Unmerited. I didn't qualify. I don't have qualification. No man can qualify to receive the forgiveness of God. No man qualifies for that. Unmerited. You don't merit. You have no qualification. I didn't have qualification. I just received. This is a grace. Undeserved. Unmerited. And end. And end means I cannot work to receive what Jesus has given me. And end. I normally work for 30 days. I get salary from my employer. There is no amount of work I can do to receive forgiveness. There is no amount of work. I, there is no amount of offering I can give to receive forgiveness from God. I can do nothing to deserve that forgiveness. I can pay nothing to receive that forgiveness. No amount of prayer can qualify me to be forgiven my sins. Is free by the grace of Jesus. And then Paul says here, the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. The grace of Jesus. This is done. He died for my sins. He shed his blood. He was buried. He rose on the third day. He ascended in heaven. Seated at the right hand of the Father. 
One day he'll come back again very soon. While the world is in confusion, the Son of Man will appear with numerous number of angels. This is Jesus. The love of God. The love of God. God has already shed his love. He released his love by giving Jesus. Jesus is the love of God. The death of Jesus is the love of God. When he was crucified, it was God's love in manifestation. When he took your sins and my sins, it was the love of God. And that is done. The grace of Jesus is done. It's for you and me to receive. It's for the world to receive. Forgiveness of sin is on the top of every person on this world. It's a matter of receiving. Believing on Jesus. Receiving forgiveness of sin. The love of God has been shared. Released. And now the third thing is the communion of the Holy Ghost. This is going on business. This is what is going on business. The love of God is already shared. The grace of Jesus is already given. But the communion of Holy Spirit, the communion of Holy... Can you say with me, communion of Holy Ghost? Communion of Holy Ghost. Communion of Holy Ghost. Communion of Holy Ghost. Now, this is what? This is how to relate with Holy Spirit. To communion with him. This is the business which is going on now. Communion with Holy Spirit. This is what is going on now. The difference between one pastor and another pastor is how he communion with Holy Ghost. The difference between one Christian and another Christian depends on how much, how do you communion with Holy Ghost? Communion with Holy Ghost. It's not asking. It's not praying. There is something more in communion. It's your mutual sharing. And this is what I want to start next week with you. Helping you how to communion with Holy Ghost. And this is very interesting. It will change the way you pray. It will change the way you approach God in your private life. It will completely change and revolutionize your life. Communion with Holy Ghost. Communion with Holy Ghost. Communion with Holy Ghost. This is what is missing. And you can never communion with him if you don't recognize him as a person. You put aside tongues. You put aside power. You put aside him and miracle. You meet him as a person. You communion with him. Next week I'll show you how to communion with Holy Ghost. It makes big difference in a Christian life. You don't go and look for things. You go and look for relation with him. You relate with Holy Spirit. You relate Relate with Holy Spirit. You spend more time in relating with Him. This is communion of Holy Ghost. Is what I'm going to share with you from next week. It is the very important part of a Christian life. Hallelujah! It will make difference in your life. How to relate with Holy Spirit? We relate with Holy Spirit through communion with Him. You communion with Him. How to communion? This is what I'm going to start next week. Can you stand up, please? When I close, I just want to remind you, Holy Spirit is not a name. The Father is not a name. The Son is not a name. But the Son has been given the name called Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the name. Holy Spirit is not the name. The Father is not the name. But surprisingly enough, this morning I was reading my Bible. And I saw the name of Jesus is the name of the Father. You can just write and go and read John 17, 11 and 12. Jesus was talking to the Father. This was his last prayer. The Gospel of John 17, verse 11 to 12. Jesus was telling the Father... 
he was thanking God. But Father, thank you for giving me these 12 disciples. And I have kept them with your name. The name which you have given me. You have given me that name. So the name of Jesus is the name of the Father, is the name of Holy Spirit. They respond in that name. And that name is not just for praying, it's for protection. He said, I have protected these 12 disciples except the one by your name which you have given me. The name of Jesus is the name of the Father which he gave to his son Jesus Christ. That name is given to you as well. It's given to me for protection. Many people, many Christians, they don't use this name. You don't use this name properly. You are supposed to use this name in your life. Use this name when you wake up in the morning. Use this name when you go out driving in the morning. Use this name to your children. Put your hand on your children. Pray in the name of Jesus. Use this name. Is the name of the Father. Is the name of Holy Spirit. The Father respond to the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost respond to the name of Jesus. Because this is their name. Hallelujah. Next week I'll show you how to communion. What it means, what does it mean to communion with Holy Ghost? And it will make big difference in your life. You need to learn how to relate with this big Holy Spirit. He is so gentle. He will never force anything to your life. Hallelujah. Can you sing the last song you sang? The last song of worship. Who will sing? That's it. Where is that city? Okay. So let us worship him. Let us worship Holy Spirit. When you worship Holy Spirit, Jesus does not feel envy. Or the Father does not feel envy. Because Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. Because Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. They are one. There are no three God. It's only one God. It's only one God. Can you raise your hand? Hallelujah.
I, I want you to take five minutes to thank God for Holy Spirit being in your life. Don't pray for anything, but just thank God. Tell Jesus, thank you so much for giving the Holy Spirit in my life. Talk to Holy Spirit. Say, you are my friend. You are my friend. I'll walk with you. I'll talk to you. Thank the Father for allowing his Holy Spirit to stay in your life. I just give you five minutes for that. Ora ba seke tondora bori, jeta ora ba banda la bori, leti tara ba ba seke tondora bori, leshi tora ba bata na mamono, iki tara ba banda la bori, biko ora ba banda la bori, loshi tora ba banda la bori. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your prayer to the Father for allowing Him to give us His Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your prayer, which was answered by the Father on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, he came upon Peter in the 120 Jerusalem. He fell of them. He filled them. They spoke in tongues and 3,000 people gave their life to you, O oh Lord. Father, I thank you so much for having the Holy Ghost in my life. Thank you for allowing your speech in me. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you so much. Thank you for teaching me about you. Thank you for showing me that you are a person. You have a feeling. You need my attention. You need my attention. You need me to speak to you. You need me to allow you to dwell in my life, to help me in different areas of my life. Oh, Holy Spirit, I worship you this morning. I worship you this morning. Thank you, Spirit of God. I thank you for your help. I thank you for strengthening me. I thank you for revealing Jesus in my heart. Thank you for revealing the Son of God in my heart. Thank you for revealing the blood of Jesus in me. Thank you for giving birth to me, Holy Spirit. I thank you for being in my life. I worship you, Spirit of God. I adore you this morning. I glorify you. You are so wonderful to me. You are wonderful when in the night. You are wonderful in the evening. You are wonderful in the morning. You are wonderful when I am well. You are wonderful when I am not well. You are wonderful when I've got money. Even when I don't have money, you are still wonderful. You are wonderful to my marriage. You are wonderful to my life. You are wonderful to my wife. You are wonderful to my children. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Can you clap to the Lord? Welcome, Brother Paul. Brother Paul. Please clap your hands for Pastor Msigwa. Are you all blessed? I, I am so excited, my friends. I am so excited. Because, because there's one thing that was revealed that the Holy Spirit is actually the Spirit of God. But the Holy Spirit there is no way to know Jesus unless you know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who convicts you and brings you to Jesus. And you cannot know the Father without knowing Jesus. You see there, it's like the Holy Trinity is at work. And that's amazing. But, Pastor, the, the, there's one thing that is a mystery. When you said that Jesus is the name of the Father, so, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. But the Father and the Holy Spirit empowers the name of Jesus. So, all the three, they pick the one name, which is Jesus Christ. And it's the only name that we all get saved. But it is through the Holy Spirit who actually gave birth to us. That's why Nicodemus, when he was asked, he asked Jesus, How can I inherit the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus told him, you must be born again. Which is born of the flesh is flesh. And which is born of the spirit is spirit. 
means Jesus was directing Nicodemus to the Holy Spirit so that he can be born in the Spirit. I don't want to go further than that. <laughs> this is so exciting. Now, if you are blessed, it is time for us to give our offerings. That's why, like, the pastor has blessed us. We've been blessed. Let's bless the Lord this morning. Okay? Some of us, we don't recognize that, but it's 